going on? Welcome to another episode of Music or Hideout, the show where we hang out with artists, musicians, and entertainers in Waylon Jennings' old basement studio. My name is Jury, and as always, I am gathered here with co-host Ryan Poole. We all pass it to you to introduce the guests. Well, tonight, on a very special episode of Music or Hideout, we have singer, songwriter, artist, musician, entertainer, Judd Huffman. What's up, guys? <laughs> it, hey. in, for the audio-only listeners, Jet just cracked open a beer. There we go. Not yeah, just any I beer. Mean, we're, that's how podcasts are done nowadays, right? We're hanging. Yeah. We're chilling. Yeah. Not just any beer. A Coors Light. A Coors, Coors Light. Light. The yeah, mountains are blue. <laughs> you know, I don't know if I've had more than like 10 Coors Lights in my life. Really? Yeah, I don't know. It's well, never, never remember, had my jam. Re- remember we went through that phase? No, we went. We got cores regular. Oh, right. All right. <laughs> Not light. That was different. Yeah. Yellow label. The, o- the OG. <laughs> yeah. That's true. That is a, you know, like they try to make cores that, That's almost fancy. malt liquor, I think. Oh, borderline, <laughs> right? It comes in a 40. Like, it's yeah. just like, ah. It's like two bucks. <laughs> yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, cores regular, like they dress it up. It looks like it's fancy. And it says banquet. Yeah, yeah, that's how you yeah, know it's banquet. good. That's what it is. Yeah. But yeah, when you uh, when you don't got a lot of money and you still want to drink beer, Coors it's not Light. a bad way to go. <laughs> yeah. Keep you hydrated. <laughs> now, what do, do you prefer light to normal? No, I just I you know I, I I drink. I used to drink IPAs all the time. I love IPAs, but you can only drink so many of them. You know, I got to drive. Mm. I'm, I'm here in Nashville. We're you know we're here in Nashville. I got to drive back to Florida tonight, so I'm gonna drive. I'm gonna get as many miles as I can before I. Take a little nap, but uh, no IPAs would not work for that. Right. Yeah, you know? that's true. <laughs> you wouldn't you make know. it. You yeah. can drink these all day and you'll still be fine. Yeah, it's you like don't, it, don't it really is like water. If you you know stick to like a few per hour. Yeah, water plus. All right. You know. Yeah. yeah, and I also like I don't know who it was that I was reading their their Instagram and they were posting about like notes to themselves and they were like, maybe don't drink only IPAs all the time. Like <laughs> you get pretty fat. And it, like, it hurts your head the next day, too, if you drink a lot of them. If you drink more than a six-pack of IPAs, your head's going to be hurting. Yeah, they're so heavy, though, more than a six-pack. It's hard. It gets hard to do. Yeah, and then you start getting the really fun ones that are <laughs> like 7 8 9%. Mm, and, right. You know, the, what do they call them? Hyd- hydros? What are they, uh, high gravity? Uh, high, oh, gravity high gravity, yeah. 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 Man. All that stuff. Uh, no, the know. older I get, the less beer I can drink. Yeah. Like, I feel like I should, just, I should drink beer all day. All, you know, I drink beer all the time. At night, have as many as you can, and then the next day, you're fine. Yeah. Um, now I'll have like three beers, and I'll wake up and be like, "Why do I feel tired this morning?" You know, I can feel it. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, yeah. I do not like this getting older thing, and it's not my friend. But well, yeah, well, we're we're still on the young side of it. Yeah. The young side of old. Keep Just telling gotta, yourself you that, Ryan. We are. <laughs> Depends how long you want to live. Now, for a while, we thought Jerry was going to die this year. True, 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 true. I did think I was going to die this year. What did the judge say? <laughs> <laughs> no, I uh, I foretold that I was going to die. I just made a joke that I knew the day I was going to die like a decade ago, and I just said a day, and it freaked people out. They don't, they're like, you can't call a day that you're going to die. And so I just kind of kept that joke riding for a decade. The problem is then the day came up. And I was like, "Oh shit! Like this is the day I'm supposed to die." Uh, 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 you know, luckily, yeah. we're still here. We yeah, that's it. when you're you're tweeting, "Hey, if, if I die, I did not kill myself." Yeah, just FYI. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody know. I know I called yeah. it, but oh, that would be really fucked up if you killed yourself to make your own prophecy. That was always the plan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got oh, dark real fast. Dark. Well, your it's wife was dark. actually Jeez, in Florida. Was she was actually in Florida that weekend? Yeah, my wife was wasn't going to be there. Weekend. Yep, her being there is probably what saved you. Maybe. Maybe she was the one who was going to kill me. The question, mm. yeah, would you go on a boat onto the ocean in the middle of nowhere with just her? Not that, on day, that day, I wouldn't. Now, I'm curious. So I've known you for years, but we're always doing a project or something. So we've never, like, sat down. I mean, except for the time we went to Put in Bay. We went to Put in Bay. We actually got to talk a little bit more and just, like, oh, chill. Yeah. That was a great time. That was a great time. It was during peak COVID. Um, <laughs> right when you weren't supposed to travel anywhere, and I was like, I'm gonna travel to this island and just see what happens. Rebel. And it was a lot Rebel of fun. Rebel heart, baby. It was a lot of fun. Love it. But uh, uh, like, how did you get started playing? I know you're from Ohio, but uh, what what got you into music in the first place? Well, let's see. Uh, so I mean, I've told this story a lot. So I, I wanted to play guitar when I was younger. My dad played. 
And he said, I was too young to play guitar. He said, you got to wait. You're not old enough yet. And then one day at school, I see a kid playing guitar, and I run home, Dad, I need a guitar, I need a guitar. He's like, you're too old. And I'm like, bullshit. I just saw a kid playing my same age, and he was good at that thing. So then uh, he, he's like, well, if you want a guitar, you got to buy one. And and I'm like, okay, well, how do I do that? You got to get a job. And I went around. I wasn't even old enough to get a job. So he found me a job for like five bucks an hour just picking up trash, pulling weeds. And I did that for like half a summer and hmm. half a summer and was able to save up half the money for a Squire Stratocaster nice. package, which at the time like I think were about... bucks or something? Well, the whole package I think was like 300 or 400 Oh, yeah, with the so, amp and everything, I mean, right? I guess uh, I haven't really thought about time. So it was like 30 hours, but there's only so much trash. And that's when I started pulling weeds. Mm. So I'm like, okay. Yeah, the cleanest this. street in the neighborhood. Yeah. And I had my own money, so I was like... You know, like going and buying honey buns and stuff. Yeah, yeah, classic. You know, all the all the good stuff. But anyways, that's that's how I so I got I got my first guitar. My dad taught me a few chords. Started listening to to Jack Johnson a lot. That was kind of mm-hmm. what got me into the rhythm. Banana pancakes. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, all the, all that stuff. And then uh, of course like John Mayer, and then moved on to Stevie Ray Vaughan. And at some point, I'm I'm playing Guitar Hero, and a lot of people didn't even know I played guitar. And they're like, you should play guitar. I'm like, I do. And they're like, what? And I pull out my guitar, and they're like, holy shit, you're pretty good at this. And okay, thanks. And then next thing you know, I ran into a guy in Reynoldsburg, Ohio, and he sang. And I jammed, started playing guitar for him, and we got a gig in in Whitehall, Ohio. And um, and after three or four gigs, he just no call, no showed. So I'm there by myself now. Classic. I don't, I don't really sing. I don't really sing. I have a few songs that I sing. And I did at that bar after had a few beers in me. At the time, I wasn't 21 yet, so, you know, drinking. It was awesome to be able to have beers, like, at a bar and get paid and get to play music, and everybody seemed to enjoy it, and I enjoyed it. And that kind of is how it all started. And then after he No Call No showed, that's when it was like, oh, I cannot. It was embarrassing because I only knew seven songs, Mm. and the crowd, there it was a regular spot, and they're like, we've heard you sing. You do sing. I'm like, I only know these seven songs, and I and every time I, you know, you get tense and nervous a lot of times when you perform yeah, in course. front of people for the first time, really. So I played those seven songs, and the the audience like clapped and just went, you know, just a lot of noise, and and had more money in that tip bucket than I'd ever had ever, and I didn't have to split it with anybody, and I played those same seven songs three times because that's all oh, I wow. knew. Yeah, you know, this is before I did that phones same or thing, anything. Did that same thing with my band recently, and by the third time, I'm like. It's pretty over it. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. I mean, at this stage, and I wouldn't. I don't think I could do that now. But for the no. first for the first time ever performing, it's like I was put on the spot. It wasn't it wasn't supposed to happen like that? Maybe it was supposed to happen like that. But then I, I told myself at that, I'm like, I'll never be put in a situation again where I cannot run a show by myself. Mm-hmm. And then so I did that for fun. I still didn't have any confidence. Ended up moving to Nashville as a guitar player and a songwriter. And I played guitar for a guy named Reese Jordan up in Ohio. And then moving down up in Ohio, I met a guy named Matt Marinchick. He's a, he's a basketball player. He he was. He still is. He, oh, he was professional. He, Ohio State. And then he played for Germany. So, oh, shit. The whole basketball country? Basketball is Yeah, in... he's, he's like six. What did he say? He always <laughs> says he's he's uh, seven foot one in heels. <laughs> <laughs> So he's like six foot ten. He'll say he's five foot twenty two. He actually has a publishing company. Five foot twenty two. Five foot twenty two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but he's great. He's a hell of a songwriter, and he's a he's still doing. We've been both been doing this for a long time. He works his ass off, and I mean, he's down. He's still here in Nashville. We moved to Nashville around the same time, so I was playing guitar for him for a while, and then I just realized that like I really I got started to learn a lot more songs and realize like i want to i want to sing more than what i am now i love doing backup vocals and all that and playing lead guitar but i like singing uh lead too and i, I can make more money singing lead it seemed like oh, than yeah. anything else I so right. i'm you know i made a living doing that for a long time but i still am you know just bought a, <laughs> just buy a bus of cash <laughs> there was, have you, did you ever listen to the comedian mitch hedberg Mitch Hedberg, uh, I have to see. Yeah. I have to see it. Maybe he's possibly. the he was real monotone and he just like one liner after one real liner, yeah, but real dry. But he had a whole thing where he was like, "I used to do drugs, <laughs> I I still do. I just used to too." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's about where I'm at with all. Well, 
Not quite with drugs. <laughs> well, wait, what's the definition of a drug? Well, I mean, caffeine. Caffeine's a drug, yeah. Nicotine, alcohol. Yeah. Wait, what's yeah, not? We're drug? all on drugs. Everybody's <laughs> on drugs a little bit. You're probably pretty boring if you're not on any drugs. Right. What? What? Wasn't there a song like "We Are All on Drugs"? Is that Weezer? Weezer. Yeah. Give me some of that stuff. We yeah. are all on drugs, or something like that. Yeah. I, I was I around forgot the, about I, that. I think it was on the same uh, album as Hashpipe. The Green yeah. Album, maybe? The Green Album. Oh, no. Wesley, can you look? Oh. Oh. No Wesley today. <laughs> no Wesley this is, today. This is a good time to point out, especially if you're watching, it's pretty awkward, but I have a keyboard here, and I am camera switching for us. It is not uh, going great. It's going okay. <laughs> I just think like if you watch great. the video, you're going to see me like constantly looking up at the TV and seeing what angle we're on. Uh, it's actually working again. Anyway, for a minute there, it wasn't working. But... Uh, just a good reminder that our show is on video, and you can see us talking, and you can see what Jet looks like yeah. if you go to Spotify or YouTube. And it's a reminder that if any of y'all are, are looking to, to be here and to work in the studio, they could have canceled easily and say, sorry, our guy can't make it, but they didn't. They're still making it happen, and I, that matters to me, that you're still doing no. it. Well, you were saying earlier it's like the Nashville cancel that's tell, what I call it. Yeah, yeah tell Nashville me about that because I think you probably experience a different side of music being an artist and playing how you play. Well, I'm like just always here in this basement, and my clients <laughs> usually show up because they're paying me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you got exactly you got to be like you know when it turns into that. But there's a thing with like songwriters a lot of times, and as a songwriter, you're not making money. You don't see money a lot of times for years or ever if you write a song with somebody, even if yeah. it's a great song. But you, you start uh, scheduling rights with people, and then it's like the day of, a couple hours before, and you, you plan your whole schedule around this, and you could maybe you turn down a gig somewhere where you could have been making money, but you wanted to do this right, and then they just cancel on you. And it's not something mm. that is like, that barely ever happens. It happens, and it's normal here. Like, mm. everybody thinks really? it's normal and okay to do that. I mean, I, I think when you get in with the right people, maybe it's not, but my experiences with it, you know, I didn't write with too many great songwriters when I lived here. Anyways, there's a few, and I, I still write with them today. <clears throat> but um, I don't know. And then it's also with gigs when you're when you're um, you're a freelance frontman and and freelance freelance uh, frontman would be a great name for this episode. Yeah, that's a pretty man. solid one. <laughs> yeah. I like there that. we go. Okay, I like that. that. That'd be a good name for a band or a song, actually. <laughs> Judd Huffman, okay. freelance frontman. There we go. <laughs> Bam, let's go. Give me a band we're going to rock your world. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a thing down here in Nashville. If, if um, I mean, I'm sure you, you guys definitely know that, but everybody's for hire. Everybody's got their price, and there's some people that, even if you've given them tons and tons and tons of work, in the past, and they have something scheduled with you, if something, an awesome opportunity comes up, they will cancel at the last minute on your ass, and now you're stuck without a drummer, or without a bass player, or without, you know, like somebody that's that you really need that knows how you do things to go on the road 12 hours to go play a, a gig for eight grand or something or, or you know, whatever, yeah. and now you're, you have to find somebody, and all your guys that you've played with for the last, for years and years, they're all already booked, and they're not canceling their gig because... It's like you don't do that, but there's a lot of people that do that here in Nashville. I think it's just mm -hmm. a thing, and it's uh, it's one of the reasons why I just I just felt like I had to move out, I had to get out for a little while, I had to get away. Yeah, well, so you've moved to Florida, but like, what? So looking back, which we should talk about, but like looking back on Nashville, you probably have a different lens now, not being in that, not being here, being in it all the time. Yeah. So I mean, obviously the canceling being one thing, but like, what else do you see about Nashville from like the Florida lens? Like, uh, um, well, I don't what do you know if miss it's just the Florida miss? lens. It's, it's yeah. just being, you know, just traveling around. And, and, you know, last year I was traveling for four months straight. And uh, this year it's been about two and a half months, I'd say. But um, it's uh, so there's the, the, the negatives for me about Nashville. That's, the, you know, I talked a little bit about that. But I feel like L.A.'s coming in. All these big cities mm -hmm. are coming in. Just big money. Everything's getting harder. Uh, just to even live here and have a the life that I used to have, yeah. And then after moving to to South Florida, it's like just another ball game, and it's a way easier lifestyle, I think. Oh, where really? I'm, where I'm still working just as hard, and I'm able to create more because because I don't have to hustle so hard. You know, like here I was doing 350 shows a year a lot of times. Down there, I can do make the you know double the money and do half the shows, oh, basically. Really? So. 
it, it's it's just that's a, a big difference for it for me. But then, then is it because the shows pay more money? Yeah, I, I mean, of course they they pay more money. But then I, I, it's also about just having a community that's smaller, that's not so touristy, where everybody mm-hmm. starts to know you. You start to get a reputation, and now you're getting private gigs like crazy that you don't have to drive five hours to or however many it's only an hour drive to get to this place where you can you know right so if you're trying to go to nashville you're playing outside of nashville right? yeah you're always you're meeting people from you know all all there's so many different big cities and big areas all within a really like a five hour drive from nashville so that's what's awesome about being here is because you get to meet all those different people from so far away and i think that helps expand your brand without having to tour you can just stay in nashville play downtown or do you know whatever shows around here and people from all over will come to see you and never have heard you before and and see you and then walk out and be a fan and then show their community and and it, that's, so that's a great thing about nashville mm, mm-hmm. um and the other thing that's awesome that i think about nashville is there's so just so much talent you know just so much talent there's so it, it's hard in in south florida you know there's only so many great players that you can pick from and most of those great players are already booked they already have their awesome gig with and they don't want to do anything else they they like what where they're at and what they're doing we're here it's like people are just hustling you know they're ready to roll they're they're ready to make something happen everybody's mm-hmm. dreaming here that you know really going after it so it's a, florida for me is kind of just more of a slowing down and just focusing focusing on okay i've been doing this music <laughs> thing now professionally for a living for at the time it was 10 years now it's about 12 years so now i'm starting to record the songs that i've been writing for the last seven eight years or whatever so it feels awesome and i'm actually coming up back up here to do it to to do the recording um recorded at at saxman studios he's kind of taken over a lot of not really taken over but he's up and coming with a lot of country music stuff he did like jelly rules album this new one with with, with sap is it called with sap travel down in Antioch. Um, so he so he did that. He's done drums for like Luke Combs. He's really just incredible drummer. He can send tracks too. So if you need somebody like he's super professional. He's got a one stop shop. He turned his house into a, a studio. He had to kick out his wife and and kid. What? <laughs> <laughs> At least they put a tent out back now. <laughs> Wait, where like, did they go? Hey, I know we already got like a tracking room and my drums and everything, but I really need a, I need a mixing room also, and I also need a mastering room, and I need a vocal tracking room, and mix, and then he just and got him another house, and now it's a one stop shop. Where it's kind of like what you're doing here. It's the same kind of thing. It's a little different. It's, he's really focusing, I think, a lot more on country music and and really trying to go that route. And but he does he does everything too, and um, and I've worked with both of you, and it's like I'm just really blessed to be around this man. It's like you can't find this in Florida. You can, and people have these awesome studios, but it's, it, I just don't think it's the same, the same like mm. level of what we have up here. Well, it's of hard people to trying to hustle and really just you know working right. out a fair price for for what it is and and people just blowing up all the time you know people just f- yeah. getting I mean, their dreams music city for a reason it. right yeah it <laughs> really is and <laughs> yeah. it, it's just wild how it's changed so it's it still feels like home you know i lived here for that for that whole decade it still definitely feels like home but um i, I think i'm at least to the florida thing for another year or so and uh yeah. Are yeah. you originally from Florida? I'm from Origi- Ohio. From Ohio, originally. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Florida's brand new to you. Never lived there before? I've been touring down there for sure. probably, I mean, before I moved down there, probably five, six years yeah. or so. And I realized it's a very, very cool place to be uh, in the wintertime. Yeah. It's way too hot in the summertime. It just seems mm. so like, because <clears throat> there's a lot of cool things about Florida, but it seems so isolated. Like it's so far. Like because you said you're in Southern Florida, right? It's like down like by like Miami and all that. Yeah, like a lot. Well, north of that. North like, of that. Basically, once you get to Lauderdale, the music, live music, kind of sh- shuts down. It turns more into DJs, which I guess mm. is considered live music too. But it's a different thing. It, yeah, very different thing. <laughs> it's more laid back up up north of. Mm. It's still South Florida, but up north of South South Florida. Is that what you call it? Um, sure. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Whatever. That's what we call it now. Whatever. The <clears throat> north of South Florida. The thing that always turns me off Florida is, one, it's so far away from everything. It's so deep in, like, its own corner. But also, I don't know if I can handle the swampland. Yeah, on Okeechobee? 
just all of, I mean all of it it's the alligators the, yeah. like the giant iguanas oh, it's like a whole different world down there I'm still I'm not a Florida man because I haven't wrestled an alligator yet <laughs> yeah but you gotta if get I on find it, the right alligator years. that looks like a punk I'm gonna <laughs> right? put him in his place you gotta find a little bitch alligator to start with <laughs> work your way up you know start small work your way up to a python you know Okay, so oh, speaking of py- pythons and gators, uh, are you about to? <laughs> no, go ahead. I know exactly what you're going to talk about. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the uh, Joe Rogan show yeah. recently. <laughs> He's had on multiple people recently that fuck with snakes. <laughs> uh, a, Python cowboy is who you're. Yeah, well, okay. he had on Python cowboy, and I listened to a little bit of that one. But the one I listened to a lot was he had on some other guy that was like who lives in the Amazon rainforest. And, like, basically he's just, like, a standard American guy who just was, like, always loved nature and thought it'd be cool to go to the rainforest. And he just went there, and I don't know what, you know, this is years down the line now, but now he's, like, just the craziest stories and just, like, you know, he's talking about headhunters that are trying to, or, sorry, unreached people. Yeah. Which... I forget they had this whole politically correct name. It was like people who voluntarily choose not to contact the rest of the world by their own Hermits. sovereign choice, right. and that's yeah. good. That's unreached people. <laughs> sovereign yeah. people. Yeah. No, it was long. It was longer than just unreached. Mm. And unreached is the wrong word. It's like un. Anyway, like real freedom. But basically, freedom yeah, people. like <laughs> basically people who have never contacted the outside world and that kill everyone on sight that they see. <laughs> To yeah. stay isolated. You don't want to be around that. Yeah. You yeah, wanna, yeah. You don't so, want to walk into that. Not trying to visit that. Yeah, it's no. not, not the move. I don't think there's anything like that in Florida. Maybe, I though. That we know of. I think well, they about, there's a name for got the, rid um, of all those people. They pushed them all the, all the way to Key West. Well, the people who used to live in the in, swamp, there was a name like for Indians. them, right? There was a, what were they called? The people who used to live in the swamps in Florida. I know a lot of them got pushed about the... Uh, there was people who lived in the swamps? Yeah, in the Everglades. Yeah, I mean, gladesmen. That's what could, they called. There could I'm like, did they turn into still be some of that? But. Like there used, I know there used to be a lot, but they got pushed out over time. You know. Yeah, there's a but big problem. There's, there's a big problem with the, the how they they're draining the water. It used to just naturally drain south mm. like a swamp, and they're pushing it out east, and it's turning all the um, like as, algae or, or whatever, mm. like a, fungi or something. It's like turning it red. It's like messing up all the hmm. the ecosystem. Yeah, it's called like red, I think they're calling it red tide or something, but it's getting yeah, to the we, point where it's we like have red tide in they, San gotta, Diego. they need to fix it, I, I guess. Like, I, I, hmm. I don't really, haven't studied much about it, um, <clears throat> but I know there's a lot of local Floridians that are very frustrated and upset yeah. and like there's a lot of charity stuff like they're trying to change all that, but that's where you start getting the politics and it's a whole crazy ordeal to make it happen right but man yeah. yeah i recently i watched a video on florida just out of curiosity looking out 30 minute youtube video what about the history florida? of florida <laughs> and how florida started and i'm not i'm not gonna remember all the details and what i do remember is probably gonna be wrong but uh essentially like they were just like look at all this swampland we can do nothing with and then some some guy was just like what if we just made land let's just move just yeah. drain the swamp and like all these spots and literally just made land like the state is a man-made state i mean it's if, wild. if you drive so if you drive south of okeechobee i mean it's nothing but like farmland really mm. it's real flat and uh i think that's all probably man-made yeah i mean i've driven through it one of the songs that i'm gonna sing you today i, I wrote about half of it while driving through there Man. Like just one of those melodies came to my because it was the first time ever driving down there it's mm. you know there's so many different styles of this country that are when you just look out and and the different trees and and all that but anyways it was just there's something inspiring about it and and um i I wrote a little song about it but i don't know i don't know if no is that the first song you're gonna play i'll probably play second second Second. okay all right right. well that being said what is the first song you're gonna play because we uh, it's about that time. It's yeah. about that time to hear yeah. a song. Um, so I never, I guess we kind of got through a little bit of my history here, and um, at uh, at one point I ended up leaving Nashville. Uh, it was around COVID. I was married and uh, and went through a divorce. It wasn't really something I wanted to do, but it's kind of you know when two people aren't working out in the house, 
That's like that's something Johnny Depp said or something. It's just hell. It's like not you know, just it's awful. What about Amber Heard, he said that. Yeah, I think, I think so. Yeah, I think I, it's something like I that. I just saw that documentary drop like this week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but um, we we're you know we were two musicians trying to make it happen, and COVID just flipped everything and didn't work, and and um, I ended up leaving, and I just this was a song I wrote by myself, kind of just about like getting back to the single life, like trying to figure out the single thing again after being married for a few years and thinking that that's what's going to be my destiny for the rest of my life and then it just comes crashing down it's a it's a song just it's called whiskey Hubman angels it's really about nashville about just the wild party it is here it's about touring and just going and doing my thing and and uh you know just trying to make the crazy dream come true make everything happen Hey there, I'm Jut. This song's called Whiskey Hellband Angels. It's a solo right about my crazy life. Well, I've been fishing every weekend, but been drinking more than fishing while I'm thinking about what went wrong. Yeah, I've been buzzing like her cousin, cutting up and kicking dust and seeing the on lights from dusk till dawn. I thought I'd pop on by our neighborhood and see if she was up to good. There's a Bronco in her drive. So I flipped it on the AM 650 WS and with those old sad songs and cried. Cause I keep getting high with whiskey helping angels. And keep painting every time I'm here to Memphis. Is it the courage in a bottle or the drowning in my sorrow? Getting high with these whiskey helping angels. After the tears and the heartache, I went drinking down on Broadway, cut off flannel boots, scoot through the door. I heard them hollers and swallers getting better by the bottles till my jaw dropped straight through the floor. I've been hung over till I'm hammered, hoping hell ain't hard to handle, hopping fences while I'm hanging on strings. They've been bending, I've been breaking, waking up completely naked with a pretty little thing there next to me. Guess I keep getting high with whiskey, helping angels. Painting every time from here, Atlanta. Is it the courage in a bottle or the drowning in my sorrow? Getting high with these whiskey helping angels. Woo! Stop this train I'm on Got a little piece of heaven All night long Getting high With these whiskey helping angels And keep painting every time For me to Los Angeles Is it the courage in the bottle Or the drowning in my sorrow Getting high With these whiskey helping angels <laughs> let's go very cool okay so that was uh what, what is it hell bent whiskey hell bent angels whiskey, you know it's whiskey bent and hell bound and um that's a you know cover song if you play country music you've probably played it a hundred times or a thousand times or whatever um yeah there we go and it's crazy because we just got done with the music video today and i was coming in i was just i just uh, left Ohio and I'm, I got to make it down to South Florida we got a gig at a place called Johnny Brown's on uh, in Del Rey on Thursday night what day is today Tuesday Tuesday yeah so I got to be there by hopefully I'm trying to get there by Wednesday night I'm, I'm going to leave after this podcast probably Damn. start heading down, How long the drive go down to there? sleep that's 12 hours in a car but I just, I just bought a 35 foot bus and I'm by myself in it so driving that it's a, it has a governor at like 65 i think oh dang so it's like you, Can you can't, take it out 
do it, do it. <laughs> I want to take the governor out, but I think that's that's uh, thirty five. I think the engineering on it, the reason why it is, is because it'll overheat oh, if you go uh, faster than that. So I'm I'm not going to take the governor out, but uh, yeah, sixty five. It's uh, you know. It's different because I'm always in the fast lane, going like 80, or you know, close to 80, and and uh, and now it's like I'm in the slow lane and everybody's passing me. It's a different style of driving. I'm normally aggressive and 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 aware of my surroundings. Now I'm being passive and being aware of my surroundings, and that's harder, I think, than being aggressive. I think mm-hmm. when you're yeah, moving, so. you're you're paying attention. When you're just chilling, it, it's like it's different than look, you know, looking at all your mirrors and doing all that. All the time, right? Because when you're mm. being aggressive, you gotta pay attention. Yeah. Otherwise, you hit someone, right? When you're in passive, yeah. you can just. Well, chill, I mean, when you're going back. on a highway, you just, you know, yeah, they might hit you so too, though. You the bus has got to be. Out for that. So that's got to be fun for like road life that you're, especially like when you're by yourself. You're like, you're you get the best of like I'm driving, I'm on a road trip, and then oh, you like pull off and just go to sleep in a real bed. It's very that is cool. pretty dope. <laughs> it's very cool because I toured I toured in a Saturn for. Like almost the whole the whole time I was in Nashville, ten years, and then I moved to Florida, and I finally I'm like, okay, I don't have any debt. I hadn't had debt for a while, and I'm like, I, I, you know, I've I've lived off of like a debt free life. Like I got into debt first time I tried to to uh, do music full time and and racked a few credit cards and ruined my credit, and it took me a long time of busting my ass working and doing gigs, gigs, gigs. You know, two, three hundred, four hundred, mm-hmm. not four hundred. Never got four hundred, but. About three fifty is probably the max in a year. That's so in many. one year, that's so many. It's a lot, but yeah. you know, when you're hustling, it's like you just take whatever you can get. So I, I did that, and I, I'm like, I got a car that's paid for. It's I've never have been stranded anywhere ever. Nice. In it. I take re- pretty good care of all the mechanics and everything. So it, it's like I, there's no reason to get rid of it. And then at, at some point, I'm like, everybody just kept telling me, I'm like, I got you know, I've saved, I've stacked up enough cash we're like i gotta do something with it i'm like screw it let's, oh, this is a minivan let's buy a minivan i can mm. sleep in the back you can you can throw a blow-up mattress so comfortable oh yeah i so think I, can, I saw your minivan that's it, right yeah so you can do so i've had that for about two years you can do the same thing or you can have a van with you and you can pull a trailer you know it's like it's real easy it's very convenient yeah. and economical it's smart 30 miles per gallon it's really smart as a solo artist that can do a one-man band thing and and like right. do it right like it's a really smart way to do it mm. but then i got an opportunity to get this bus and and it was a it was like an offer where it's like i could sell this thing for double what i bought it for so it's like My i wife. have to buy it yeah. i can't yeah. say no but little did i know it's just a super expense always like oh know, yeah the owning main, it it's like even, owning a boat right it's it's I, yeah that's, that's what i keep hearing it's similar and it's like there's already like little things just little things are always going to happen it's just a lot of time and putting it into it and then you just be well, you used to get 30 miles a gallon in your head and now you're down to like, like seven so. miles a gallon maybe 10 if you're not pulling anything <laughs> and driving slow it, it's like it's just a different it's a whole yeah. different world but i'm just now got into i just started using the bus a little bit this summer so, so do you drive it up here as well from no, florida okay, no it was already it. it was already up here okay yeah so oh so you just bought it yeah gotcha. well i actually bought it in january oh okay but it was sitting up here and it was like i'm not going to use them i'll just come when i get up here i'll you know just kind of flow got and, it. and so it worked out my girl came up she flew up picked up the dog drove the van back down to Florida and she did the whole trip. It's like a 17 hour drive. Wow. She did it straight through. And I'm like, I've never done that. I'm like the That's guy incredibly that dangerous. drives yeah. like crazy. <laughs> like I'll do, I can do 12 hours straight through and that's very, very, very difficult. Yeah. Especially if you're solo. It's easier with two guys. It's, it's a lot easier with two guys. You can, you can take turns, but as solo, that's very hard to do. Yeah. And she did it. I'm like, you're a so champ. Y- y'all got a new dog? Yeah. It, it, well, it's her dog, her but dog. It's, okay. now it's my dog. My dog what, what kind of dog though? It, uh, we think it, it's it's a I guess you'd call it a, a mutt, but we think it's a Carolina dog, all white, two different colored eyes, and just is like a sweetheart. Her name's Callie. She like just it just always hangs out by your mm. side, mm. listens pretty well. You can yeah. you can go out without a leash, and uh, she listens to you. She gets real defensive though. If people come around. That's mm. what I've been working. At. She's getting better now with being around people. I think, but. Uh, how old is it? She's probably like probably four years old or so. 
I, I have a real bad sense of time. You doing right mm. over there on the keys? Yeah, it's like stop working. I'm trying to figure it out. You can see me like fidgeting over here. I'm like, come on, change cameras. There it goes. Could you not see the mouse pointer with your terrible glasses eyes? I can see. I just clicked the wrong thing. I think you need mm. another drink. <laughs> right? I'm trying, trying mountains, to make it work. Uh, those mountains are cooling down. They're looking more gray now. Yeah. Okay, speaking of take another drink, you have a song, Today We Drink. Today We Drink. Yeah. You know what it's about? I, I assume just drinking. <laughs> today together. Drinking today together. That's what we're doing Today right we now. Drink. Wait. <laughs> so yes, it's <laughs> so yes, it is it's exactly what's about, about drinking. It's about drinking to, today. It's about together sure. and, and together and, and togetherness. And togetherness like, and friendship. Trying to make it yeah. real deep. If you, if in case it wins an award, you can go out there and give like a substantive speech. Like <laughs> so many people are drinking alone, and I just want to change that. You know, togetherness yeah. is what we need. I drink alone, and, and you don't have tomorrow. You only have today. <laughs> yeah, nobody else. Now, a lot well, of your George brand, Thurgood, This is the opposite of a George Thurgood drinking <laughs> song. A, a lot of your brand is like around partying. Like I've seen you live a few different times, and you know you're very like a lot of the gigs that that you've tra- traditionally done. That at least I, that I've come to, it's it's different than what people think. Like because it's the Nashville way, like down on Broadway. And then when I saw you in Putin Bay, it's 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 not like you show up to a stadium. It's more like you're at a bar. There's a bunch of people there just looking to have a good time, and they've never heard of you. And you have to go from zero to a hundred with them. And so it's a different kind of performance because, like, when I've seen you play, it's like, but you know, the first song no one's ever heard of you, and then several songs in, all of a sudden you have fans slash friends and you're getting them to take shots and take drinks. And it's very much like you're leading the party and like getting people to like amp up. Um, yeah. yeah. Talk about that. Like, I mean, I feel like a lot of that's like because of Broadway, I would guess, but it seems like partying has like become a big part of your brand. Well, <clears throat> see if I can say this right. It's a, uh... It's something that I'm actually I'm kind of trying to get out of that style what you're talking about because I, I like you know you have the Oliver Anthony guy that just came out and, oh, yeah. and like turned down an eight million dollar deal and he says I don't want six buses I don't want to play at a stadium I just saw him I post do. that yeah <laughs> I, I'll take his buses I'll, I'll, I'll rock that stadium let's go yeah. brother let's I just go. saw him post that and he, and I was like. I'm like, but maybe you should though. Yeah, maybe, you should, maybe you should try. Just, just kind of yeah, sounds like a good you know, plan. Like, you, you could do that for for a few years, yeah. give it a decade, and stack and, up the cash. Come on now, <laughs> but um, yeah. So I think, that, but I, like that's kind of my thing. The more people I play in front of, it's like a high to me. You know, it's like it's like a drug. It's like it, the more people, the better I'm going to sound. The better I'm going to perform. The better I'm going to lead that whole thing. And it's not just a party thing, but it has been. You've seen a lot of that. So, oh, I see. Yeah, oh, there we go. Getting another course let's, line. Let's see what's going on. So, uh, yeah, so for years, definitely in Nashville, one, that's kind of why I stopped. I didn't stop, but that's why I kind of put being a front man in front of being a guitar player in, in front of being a songwriter a little bit because it was making me money as a front man. So there's a, I look at it real simple simply it, it's um it, when you're at when you're playing at a bar when you're getting hired to play at a bar the bar oh, there's certain bars that they, they want you to sound good they care about that most of the bars don't give a shit what you sound like they want, they want you to buy drinks they want to make money and if they're making money and people are talking about you and they're coming back again and, and you're helping them build their brand they're going to keep hiring you and then you can keep asking for more because you're worth more you know, there's uh, that's a, uh, one of the differences between Nashville and so many other places that have great music all over the country. You don't have entertainers in a lot of these other places. They play their music, they sound great, but they're people. They're boring. They're mm-hmm. they're not doing anything extra, and that's okay. And that's kind of one of the reasons that, that I'm loving Florida is because if I'm having, you know, I'm playing five or six gigs a week. If there's there's days where I'm like I don't really feel like talking I don't really want to do the entertaining I can just chill and then I can it, what I've been learning I can capture a crowd with just just playing what I feel like playing and not even pushing the drinking not even doing that and mm-hmm. then when it's like if I feel like turning up one of my things I love saying I think everybody should get a shot hey everybody I think <laughs> I think everybody should get a shot right now what do you say 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, there's so many different ways to do it. It's always freestyling. Yeah. So, but, so when that happens, how often do people buy, buy you shots? Too much. Right. <laughs> do, and do you always take them? Way too much. Yeah. No, no, no. I mean, I've done, I've done definitely complete like sobriety from from alcohol for months at a time. Yeah. It's very hard to do when you're working in a bar. You know, <laughs> like every like all every night. Yeah. It's tough. It's tough. And then it, and then it kind of what I've learned is it takes away from my th- the way I run a show. It's a different kind of show. If I'm not drinking, mm-hmm. you know, like doing that, it's like a shtick basically. It's a Nashville shtick kind of where you're. Let's drink. Let's do shots. Let's do all that. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I can do that very well. I'm really trying to get out of it though, and that's kind of why I'm releasing this music. And like, okay. It's time to like, you know, I did my 20s in Nashville. All, well, basically all my 20s were in Nashville in the early 30s. So it's like it's time to go to the next level. And that's kind of like where, you know, like uh, like the night tides and the thing you're doing. Like you're you're crushing that like artist thing and the, the, whole, the whole making it like actual music and something where it's not just going and partying and everything i think partying will always Mm. be a part of my brand it's definitely like you know country music you know is always about drinking it's about heartache it's about god and family Mm. and being a rebel person for girls it's it's a lot about uh getting their heart broken and hating guys (laughs) a little bit but seems like we got the better end of the deal on that one (laughs) yeah i mean there's a lot of girl hating it's about parties and god (laughs) <laughs> yeah, we're, I'm just, I just want to. I just want to love and and uh, and and just feel do what I do and and have a good time. And I think most people just want to do that as well. But uh, I feel like we're on a tangent. We I start. I'm talking too much. I start drinking these no. beers and I'm just gabbing now. To no, be fair, good. We're on a talk- what we do best. Yeah, and we're on a talking show. We're all, right. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, that's what I'm here yeah, for. So, so it's allowed. I thought we were hanging out. Okay. Well, yeah, we are. Re- okay, we are recording this. All right, let's do this. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I don't know if you had heard, but we like to talk on podcasts. <laughs> that's what we do. <laughs> but, yeah, we're also like being our own camera switchers. We're like remarkably on task. Like I haven't pressed any buttons. Maybe I need to loosen up. Oh, here we go. What's that one do? <laughs> yeah, is Speaking, that Mario? Can you make it work again? I don't think that was that wasn't the Mario that I played. It was more like Super Mario, <laughs> Mario Brothers Three. <laughs> yeah, tonight's video not the as good. Yeah, yeah. If you guys watch this on video, I apologize for the aggressive camera switching and then no camera switching for a long time. <laughs> yeah, now, I'll be like one, for you? two. No, it's not working. You just, you just gotta. Oh, I see what you're clicking on the mouse. I thought you were clicking OBS. I got you. I'll just use that. That's yeah. way better. Cam one, cam two, right there. That would be a little less it's distracting, not, maybe. It's not way better. No, you're but, right. But um, but yeah. I can be like, yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, you I got this it, shitty one button mouse. We've got the spirit. Anyways, we'll figure it out. <laughs> so. There we go. That, I like that. Got that got me back in. That got me back in. You got you back in the mode. All right. Now, what was that from? Is that something like? Where is that from? Did I don't you know. make that? No, Wes- so Wesley finds all these. Okay. Yeah. He. Well, uh, since Wesley's not here, next time you should just hire. You should just because I know how creative you are and how much you record. You should just record a bunch of weird stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> just, just make your own, like you know. Yeah. yeah. Mo- that'd be yeah. fun. Most that'd be, of the sounds are. It like, would be fun to kind of get. Just into spend it. a day yeah. of like, okay, we're going to make a bunch of buttons that we can push that <laughs> sound cool. Well, we've got a ton <laughs> of them. Um, I will say he did swap, swap them all up for Christmas. We had like a Christmas episode, and he swapped up all the buttons. And he didn't tell us, so we just started pressing buttons. We're like, "What the Ooh. fuck is that stuff?" Oh, holy jolly! Yeah. Oh no, they were like, they're intense. There's like a dubstep Christmas. Like I was like, it was pretty wild. But yeah, uh, yeah, it's kind of fun to let him do it, especially when we get a button refresh. Like, every, I'm just pressing. Like, what's this one do? What's this one do? What's this one do? Which, by the way, we didn't really tell you about this, but you're welcome to press buttons. You can't really want. read what they are. You just guess. Yeah. Sometimes it's really funny. Oh, you okay. Here, let's go. <laughs> you push this one yet? Yeah. Oh. X Files. Oh, X Files action. Judd Huffman was just a man until. <laughs> until. It, it keeps going, huh? I don't know how long this. Button Apparently, is. we'll just see. Let's. This is. We're just gonna let it ride. We're just gonna let it ride. See what happens. Just let it. <laughs> All right. Oh wow! It's like the whole theme song. <laughs> hey, it's like, it went for a little while there. It ends it's good to know that we can have it for a longer time should we need it. Mm. So you were telling me earlier um, that you might want to talk about that guitar. What do you oh, want to yeah. say about that guitar? Uh, I wanted to talk actually about the other guitar, but I left it in the bus. We'll it's talk about um, that one too. 
I built, so I, well, I guess we can do this one. I've already talked enough about that guitar and other things. This is a guitar, when I first moved to Nashville, I had a, ya what I have? I had a Yamaha mm -hmm. uh, 300. I actually sold that to somebody else, one of my buddies, and the, the deal was, sell it to you, you're never allowed to sell it to anybody else without offering it to me first to buy it. Mm. And so I, I think he still has that, but... This is uh, just the Taylor 314. It's a workhorse. And you know, I'm not a huge Taylor guy. I definitely like Martins more, and and uh, I don't own any Gibson acoustics. I've been looking for the right one, Epiphone Texan from the late 60s, mid to late 60s. But mm. uh, this one's just been through everything, man. Yeah, it looks like it's it. It's been through yeah. everything. It's It's been through a, a crash and... and uh, and uh, a had crash? A, a little fall. Yeah, it had a fall. It was in the case, but it dropped, like... Uh, real far. I was letting somebody uh, mess around with it that probably shouldn't have been messing around with it at the time, and, they, and it ended up getting dropped, and it cracked, and all this wood right here was like flipped up this way. Oh wow! Flipped up. Is that and, why um, those like lines are there? That's all cracked, but we got a Luther here, um, right there on on uh, Trinity and Gallatin. That place oh, I can't okay. remember what it's called. That that uh, little music shop. Um, is it, I Dang mean, on it. I can't think of the name a, of it. Uh, the record store? Uh, no, it's a it's a they got like a bo like boutique pedals and stuff, but they also have like a Luther to oh, people that can e like work e stuff. Uh, Eastside Music Supply. Eastside Music Supply. Yep, there you go. I uh, have their shout out to them. I have their stickers on in the bathroom. Oh, they're uh, they're great. I man. went there to go check out amps recently, and I they let me try out like I tried out like ten different amps, and it was awesome. They had hmm. some. They had really good stuff. Yeah. That's like the Nashville fucking difference is that I go into this like small music store and they have the amps. They had a, ba a Fender Basement. Sorry, they had two Fender Basement. They had yeah, an Orange they, Rocker Verb. The best. They had a jazz chorus. They had every kind of Fender. They had magnetones. Like they had all the like the real shit and vintage amps and like yeah. everything that I've been wanting to try, they had. Well, you think about so, yeah. it. I mean, everyone who's here is the people who use those, right? Right. <laughs> like, yeah. you're just not going to get that somewhere like San Diego, where we're from. There's like six bands in the whole city. Yeah. And, I mean, that's, <laughs> and only two of them play out, you know? <laughs> I feel like that's in most cities, though. You can right. go to most cities, and it's just, it's not. It's just Usually, not the small on the music level. store, you like guitar centers who would have your better amps, and a small music store is generally like some the, off brand oh, crap for beginners. So, we do have yep. Moe's guitars. Mm, yeah. Moe's has got some good stuff in San Diego. Oh, do they? Have you never been to Moe's? In, it's in I'm downtown sure La Mesa. I have. They're, they're really good for guitars, not amps. But they've yeah. got, they'll have a pretty good there's, selection. There's there. a good spot. There's, you know, you got to find them. They're, they're hard to come by. Like, you know, right. there's one called Wildwood. Mm. And they have the best acoustic guitars that are all custom, like Martins and Taylors and Gibsons, and then a bunch of stuff from up in Canada. Canada is a great place to build guitars because of the humidity and everything. Oh, really? It's a really, really, really good spot. Like, a layer of these are. I would think that would make it there. worse. It's it probably doesn't... not all places. Well, you're supposed to be, let's see, I think it's between 35 and 45%. Chance or chance of humidity. We have a chance of humidity. For thirty-five <laughs> and forty-five percent humidity the whole time. You're you're. That's where that's really? where instruments are best. Like you should have this place always at the, around that humidity. Oh, interesting. But I mean, you don't well, want to have Nashville, a bunch of guitars so. in here though. So yeah. I think you have a few. A you definitely have some handful. Yeah. Ones. Maybe I should test my humidity sometime. You it seems pretty yeah. nice in here. Yeah, I mean, I just it's always. Air conditioned and also being the basement, it's a lot cooler. Yeah, which is why all the flies get in here because the flies hover around my door because it's ten degrees cooler at the basement door than it is up in the outside. Oh, world. that's interesting. So hmm. all these, well, it's you ten don't degrees have, like, cooler dead when you go down the stairs. In the walls or something. I mean, fifty fifty. Did Whalen <laughs> like put somebody in the walls over here or something? <laughs> you never know. Yeah. Yeah. Whalen was a wild boy. I've heard some crazy yeah. stories about about him. Speaking of Whalen. Uh, Speaking of Waylon, Johnny Cash. Um, <laughs> okay, just jumping. All right, sure. Excuse me, a little jump they, off they point. They were buddies. We're uh, so my fiance and I are looking for a wedding venue right now, and so we're taking little tours. And we just did a tour of this place in Dixon called the Ruskin, and it's like it's an estate. Real interesting history there. I haven't like dived into all of it, but first of all, they have a cave. That used to be owned by Johnny Cash, and him and Just I guess several cave? other musicians. A cave, 
him and several other musicians went in on it. It has like it has like it's not a, crazy reverb, but a, a decent amount. Yeah. Have you heard of this place before? Yeah, my buddy Mitch, who's played, he's one of my one of my really good friends. He's played drums with me a lot through the years. We've toured all over in that Saturn that I was talking about earlier. Yeah. And uh, he's just, I just had a bunch of pictures up saying how he played there, and it was, it looked incredible. It looked like a very cool, unique experience. Yeah. So I'm they sure do the sound there. was, it has to, the sound has to be good in there. Yeah. And so they used to go do country shows there. All the mm. time. Well, we just got that one that one venue that's in a cave, like on the border of Kentucky, right? Like right over the border. Yeah. Didn't you go see Lost River? You went and saw someone Lost there, River right? in a cave. cave. Oh no, Lost River Cave is another wedding venue we looked at. Oh. The caves where I went, I went and saw Jimmy Eat World and Dashboard Confessional at a cave. I think they call it the caves, the and cave. it's it's like towards Manchester, so down south, like an hour. But I got to imagine. And then there's the Mammoth Caves, I think they're called. That's like the biggest they, cave in the whole world, They right? also do music right. there. They do, I didn't know that they, they did music there, though. I think they do. I might be confused. There's a lot of caves around, apparently. Apparently, actually, we heard that Nash, or sorry, Tennessee has the most caves of anywhere in the country. Why? Which I didn't That's know. I, like, we haven't explored enough yeah. caves here, apparently. Yeah, we need to go to more caves. So I, the I like rest, going through you know, caves. That's just wow. It's, a, it's, just, it's, a blast. it's just crazy how old this world is and how you know how insignificant yeah. we are. It, it makes it humbles you, I yeah. guess. I mean, I know we're we're all. I think each person is very significant on this yeah. earth, but it's just wild it going. Well, it, it does something. It changes well, your spirit a yeah. little well, bit. When we were uh, when Ryan and I were a little younger, like ten years ago, maybe at this point. Uh, we used to go out in San Diego uh, in like the middle of the night and try to find these old abandoned mines. Oh yeah, and we never yeah. knew really where they were. We would just like Google like mines San Diego. Was it you that found the list? Like, oh yeah, I found like a, there was a list like, I found, found, found old government claims for right, mine these shafts. Old, old, old mines, and we would just like have like general GPS coordinates, and we'd go out there at like midnight and just go and be like can we find this mine in the middle of the nowhere <clears throat> and we found a few really dope ones and we just explore them and like climb through and up them and everything it was incredibly dangerous there's yeah, like a picture of I me mean, like I'm like like ah a thumbs up with like this giant like probably like eight by eight piece of wood just like cracked and you're like in down half. inside of them yeah we're like in there or you better have like 17 flashlights yeah <laughs> we just had like if, one if each you, if you run out of flashlights <laughs> you're like done yo, yo we would oh, go in real you're dark never gonna turn the lights out we were pitch like, black if it's a real mine yeah. we were like black. 23 or yeah about there. yeah about 23 and and our supplies was like i would bring a backpack I put in some toilet paper, which we never used. Not but, even one time. But if you, if you got <laughs> stranded, maybe you'd want that. That's and, an American thing. Yeah. We gotta have toilet paper. <laughs> and, a, and a flashlight. You know, each, we'd each have a flashlight. And, um, and that was it. And that was probably <laughs> that it. Was all no, a supplies. pack of cigarettes. Yeah, I had a pack of cigarettes. Some, I, I think yeah. I had a rope for a while or some twine or something. Yeah. And we never one used it. One time we brought a hose. And we did. We tried to climb it. Like, it, loop it on which, yeah. by the way, don't ever try to climb a hose because that shit stretches. <laughs> like, you don't realize it. They're made of rubber. Yeah, they it's stretch. Be, uh, yeah, it's, the, it doesn't mean. work at all. It was but not up what, move. Well, what we did, though, was uh, I, I we found this cave and we started thinking that maybe there was a second level to it, but you couldn't see. Yeah, that was the Redmond Mine. Mm -hmm. We eventually so discovered I, the name. So I borrowed some rock climbing shoes and I free climbed this wall and... When I got to the top, I realized there was a second level. Eventually, we found there was a third level to this mine shaft, and so you were, like I climbed up about fifteen feet, and then I went up there, and we we tied a a hose, a oh, garden it was more hose, than fifteen feet. That thing was huge, twenty feet. If I had to guess, honestly, if I had to guess, feet. I'm gonna I feel like what I'm gonna say now is gonna sound ridiculous. Yeah. But after you said fifteen, but I feel like it was forty feet, like easy forty feet. It was huh. so it was ridiculous. It I'll was go like thirty. I'll give you thirty. Nice. Either way, I got a picture of it somewhere. I'll bring it up. Yeah. So either way, I, I we tied a, a garden hose and a rope to my belt loop, and I climbed the wall. And when I got up there, I tied the garden hose and, and the and the rope around a giant boulder that had fucking collapsed off of you know the second floor <laughs> and surely rolled down and destroyed things. So I wrapped it around the boulder, then threw it down, and, and I then climbed up. Yeah. Jury and our other friend Jared climbed up the rope. Sheesh. And, and we joined, eventually like, you're like do it. That's like yeah. real. And then we like, fucking rappelled back down. 
Well, you, you know what was like crazy? Quite, you're cave dwellers. You're, yeah. You're like doing like real. Yeah. Like that's what. That's so we're, much fun, isn't it? It's gotta be really so hard. much fun. There and by the way, we gotta be in like a. We gotta be like in a minority of people who have like, like, you know, gone in a cave of, of some yeah, or and then like created our own rope system like sure. if you go on a cave tour first of all you're not climbing ropes you're not climbing ropes they, they don't do stairs. that period they build, <laughs> yeah so like how many people have gone and set up their own ropes like i'm sure spelunkers Living. do sure Freedom. that rope's still there rock climbers i'm sure <laughs> could do, do this but we were just random kids that just thought this would be Let's fun go. Yeah. yeah but there was this like super like at the very top we got up to like the second or third level and there was this shaft that went straight up and we eventually, I think we figured out, we think it was like an air vent or something, but uh, we were like, let's go up. And it was like super narrow to the point where we had our backs against one wall and our legs against the other, just like shimmying up for like, I don't know, 30 or right. 40 feet. So Ryan's right above me and we're just shimmying up this thing. Yeah. I'm like, it rocks right down here. on my head. Like a little thing. It's like a little chimney. Yeah. You know? And we get all the way up and there's nowhere to go. And I'm like, oh, shit, now we got to shimmy back down yeah. this thing? And that was way worse than going up. I, I might have said this then, but it reminded me of the Yellowstone Lodge. Uh. Which have you, like, which I probably didn't say. <laughs> 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 um, this is what it's like in a cave in a mine. It's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, oh, wow. Sorry. Oh, here we go. It's like it's like this. It's like that black. You can't see anything. For, au- yeah. for the audio only listeners, Jut is using his hands to simulate a cave to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was wild. If you get a chance to go explore an abandoned cave, not like a tourist cave. Those are fun too. It's the move. It's but super fun. Yeah, the, the tourist show. caves are fun, but like if you just go on your own, you know. The uh, uh I, I, I just went to one up uh, up in Newfoundland, an iron mine. And it was just crazy going there. It goes down for like nine miles. And it's it's like down there they had to suck all the water out of it. And it, we only got down like I think like a quarter mile down the ground at, what did you say, a five, six percent incline or something. That just keeps going down for nine miles. Nine. And goes all around and then expands out like all these different ways. It's insane just thinking about that. These people would go and work for 12 hours down the mine. Some of them, it would take them hours to even get to the mine, Bruh. to even get to the mine. Then they go down there. They had like 12-year-old kids working down in there, like moving the horses and stuff. That's so nuts. It's wild. Wow. Like, like how, like, just, it's wild to think about, you know? It's pretty crazy. It's like, But, um, oh, there we go. He's got it. It's, yeah. There we go. So the, speaking of that, I got this new song that it's, it's a whole record that is uh it's about freedom it's about my life it's 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 called crazy dream and it's about being able to go out and check out all these mines and be able to just tour and i just got this bus and it's like i'm just pumped about it and uh i want y'all to hear it i don't know your name but I know who you are It seems to me you were every child Old school moving miles Your feet up on the dashboard With a pedal down full throttle To ride or die until the end Going out with a smile And I know you've been drinking that tequila And I know that that whiskey hurts your head And I know that this green And that pop that you be smoking When you wake up out and early out of bed So won't you come with me Living in this crazy dream through the mountains, the fields, in the desert Take a trip across the ocean The only way of knowing is going where you've never gone And let your love light show, yeah So you've been running for a while Someone on your mind You've been burning tires and setting fires Riding that long white line Some people think you're crazy Well, hell, they may be right But either way, we're all the same Trying to make the best of life And I know you've been drinking that tequila And I know that that whiskey hurts your head And I know that this green And that pop that you be smoking When you wake up bright and early out of bed So won't you come with me Living in this crazy dream Through the mountains, the fields, and the desert Take a trip across the ocean The only way of knowing Is going where you've never gone And let your love light show, yeah, yeah (laughs) 
Break down, hang out, working on new sound, new bus, new gig, headed to a new town, late night bar fight, gonna make it all right, hotel, motel, gotta catch a red eye, crazy, crazy dream. All those prayers you've been saying becoming reality. So won't you come with me, living in this crazy dream, blue mountains, fields in the desert. Take a trip across the ocean The only way of knowing Is going where you've never gone And let your love light show Yeah, yeah, yeah Yee-hoo! And we're back so that was crazy yeah, dream. That was crazy, wasn't it? It sure. It was a little crazy. It's a little sloppy on, on my guitar, but hey, we're doing a live recording. That's the point of it. When does Crazy Dream come out? I haven't got the date for it. I'm thinking, um, like probably early 2024, maybe. I, I've got, you know, we record this whole album, so we got 13, 14 tracks, and we got to get it down to 12, and so I got to pick two tracks to, to not be on it. And then, um, you know, I'm trying to do a whole thing where you do sing a lot of time and, and you know, do all mm-hmm. that, learning as a go. I haven't been doing too great at it so far, but hopefully something will click and it'll work. We'll figure it out. But, uh, yeah, I, I would say by uh, early 2024, nice. we'll release the whole record. And then the goal, I don't really like telling people my goals anymore, but <laughs> the, the plan is uh, to do the same exact album and do it acoustic in the studio live. Yeah, oh, wow. Yeah, I'd heard something about that uh, before. So someone told me, I don't remember where I heard this, this a long time ago. But someone said, never tell people your goals. Because yeah. just the act of talking about it with somebody makes you have the feeling of working on it. And it makes you less likely to actually get something done. Like you get yeah. a little dopamine hit. You get the dopamine you're like, hit. Oh, yeah, you're like, I'm so excited, I'm going to do yeah. this thing. And you're like, ah, and then you don't do shit. Yeah, and then there's the opposite of it where you you tell people that you're going to do that and they they help you make it happen. Like you you put it out in the universe and it happens. Like, you know, you're, there's a there's any any way you can look at it, but I've done enough over the years of, of saying that I'm going to do something and not doing it. You know, that, yeah. and that's not a good feeling when you start doing that enough times to where it becomes normal. Uh, yeah. Where you're saying I'm going to release this song soon, but soon is like. Here it is, six years, years later, later, and yeah. I'm like, I, I told you I'm going to release it, but it wasn't when people think it's going to be. And that that's, I think a lot of that is like an artist thing. Is it's like mm-hmm. you don't, as artists, I think in general, um, the, like you don't have sense of time, in a lot of ways, and you're just free flowing and just going through. Yeah. The, uh, that's one side of it, but well, it kind of goes back to what you were saying earlier about like the Nashville cancel, right? Like, there's a (laughs) reputation for artists in general of flaky, canceling, like, you know, can't focus, ADHD, like, that whole jam. And that, like, feeds right into that. Yeah, there's a style that's, uh, I don't know, it it can slide by here where other places it doesn't, I think, maybe. but You can, like, um, get away with it a little more? Yeah. I don't know. There's different rules everywhere you go. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. What are the rules of Florida? (laughs) <laughs> the rules of Florida? Are there yeah. rules in Florida? What? I don't know. Florida's, I mean, it, it, when you say Florida, though, there's so many different areas. So specific to like. We are um, in like the like West like, Palm region. Palm, Palm Beach County, like that whole thing is, um, you know, as a musician, it's like you're, you know, there's different layers of it. There's the musicians that are party bands and are hammered and showing up late and doing whatever mm. and that's acceptable they probably get paid a lot less than the other bands that are more real that are more professional and get there on time do their job and get out um and there's the other bands that don't really care and and they they're also doing well too and and uh i don't know i don't know i don't i'm trying to to describe yeah. Yeah, something yeah, yeah, that yeah. i'm now, like Palm, i don't Palm know Beach how has this like, works. <laughs> it, it's it's like a pretty wealthy area right it's it's um uh, yeah, I mean, uh, so there's uh, the one, the, you know, the I, the island. Yeah, Palm Beach is definitely it's like all billionaires for the most part. You know, the have you Oprah got, Winfrey's have you and Howard gigs? Stern's and have you, you know, had any like gigs for like any super wealthy people? And all that stuff. Epstein's. 
They all live there. Yeah, he did live there. He <laughs> oh, lived you right you don't there. know about the billionaire strip? It's a billionaire strip. It's got. Yeah, it's I think wild. It's like yeah. forty billionaires live right there. I think uh, I might I might be off. It might be less or more. It's but like all of them. It's like, like all the billionaires have a place. Well, there. It's really cool driving just driving down that strip because it's like you see these houses and it's like you have a lot of places people want to show off their wealth. They want you to see it and you see a little bit of that down there. But I feel like all over the country, like you go in these wealthy neighborhoods and people want to show off their wealth. Mm -hmm. You go in into to Palm Beach, they got they got complete walls and shrubs and stuff around their house. You can't even see their house. They don't want you mm -hmm. to see. They don't want. They want privacy. They don't even want you to know who they are. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. in, in general. Uh, but then there. But then you have all the other people that live like in West Palm, or like you know Jupiter. Like there's a bunch of different little suburbs too, but. You got all these people that want to get in with those people, so they're trying to look like they have more money than what they do. They're trying to act. Mm. Everybody's trying to act like they have tons and tons of money, so they can be accepted by these these super. Which like elites. does that work? I don't know. My guess is I, no. I'm I'm like literally in a bus down by the river, basically <laughs> <Yeah. you know? laughs> down by the the ocean. Little, you know, if a hurricane comes through, I'm like I got it. I don't know what I'm even gonna do. Now, when you're playing out there, have you had any opportunities to play like at a rich person's house for like a private party or anything? Yeah, I mean it's so crazy. Like when you say rich person, because growing up, like I grew up with my dad and my brother in a and basically the, the projects in Pataskala. So it's like, to me, at that time, rich people were like, if you owned a house or if you were a kid that lived in a house or, right. or, or if you were a kid with two parents, it's like, you're rich, you know? Mm. Like if you're, if you're, that's how, so it, it's really rich people that, that whole word, that, that, how you describe, like it, it could be anything. It's different to everybody, but down there it's more like wealthy people just like it, right. they call it like different level i don't part of my french or is, I don't, is fuck a french word i don't even know <laughs> what it actually is fuck. It, i think is it'd it, be like okay <laughs> but they got like Fuck, fuck you money you know yeah. yeah it's like like uh i've heard stories of of um you know like like houses where they build a whole pool that's like worth millions of dollars they have one party there and then they tear it down and build another one. Bruh. What? <laughs> a different pool? A different pool in the it's same like a... place. And they do that every couple of years or whatever because they're elite friends or whoever. I don't, I, you know, I don't. It's all just stuff I hear. The I don't even know if it's true, but it party. seems like it's pretty true to me. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I it's believe definitely, it. It's definitely, there's different layers of it. So you talk about the 1%. I think Palm Beach, the actual island is like the, Top point zero 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 one percent of, <laughs> of the whole world in wealth for sure. Like, they're, oh. they're, man, they're that group that's like these seventy people own ninety nine percent of the world, and you're like <laughs> Jesus. It, I mean, uh, yeah, something like that. I don't, you know, I don't know. But to me, it, it's like that's that's just part of it. It's cool because that you know a lot. I, I think a lot of those people are really good people, and it trickles down. To, to all the other people that, like I was just talking about, that want to have that. You know, it, it's, a, it's, it's so inspirational just to drive down mm. that island and just see this, like, wow, this is real life. Like, there's people that actually live like this. What do they do? I don't know. I, don't I mean, know. like, the one guy, the Epstein guy that, that yeah. it's like... Sell children. Nobody knew what he did for, for years and years and years and years. And, and still, I don't think anybody really knows what he did. He didn't yeah. do anything, right? Like, he just has all his money. He, like, introduces people or whatever. This, I don't know. I, I've, I've watched, like, a, that documentary on him oh, and yeah, stuff, yeah. and it's like, wow, this happened down here. This happened, yeah. like, at these bars that I go to, some of the bars I play at, I would put money on it. That guy's probably been there at those bars watching a band just like me. Or, or somebody playing, and and who knows what the heck was going on. So it's just wild because you're in that. It just really makes you think of like like the Wild West days, like the Wild West where anything goes. They probably live that kind of life down there. You know, they can do whatever they want for the most part. Yeah, when you have probably, a certain level maybe. of money, like nothing really applies to you anymore. Maybe you know I you mean, can do whatever you want. I don't know. Get away with it. I, but you have like Trump right now, like getting charge on all these different areas with all this stuff and it's like he's not going to jail though 
There's no way. I, I won't I believe it until happen. he is, until I see a picture of him in jail. Like, there's no way a ex-president billionaire is going to jail. Like, I there's said, no way. <laughs> this is a very dark place. I said to myself, wow, this is a very dark place. <laughs> <laughs> that was all I had. That's all you got. That's yeah. all you got. <laughs> Bars yeah. on all the windows and doors. Yeah, but that's where uh, Mar Lago is, right? His uh, his big yeah, spot. it's right on, down on there. That strip, that, that's right? what I'm saying. Like you have that that caliber of people. But do you think like Trump and let's say Jeffrey Epstein, but just like any other billionaire on that billionaire Bezos. strip, like the billionaires on the billionaire strip, Jeff Bezos and Trump, like or to, do you think he lost a bet, like? Like that he had to, you know, like he lost a bet and had to go be president. And there was like, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and they're like, <laughs> and then it's like, and you got to fund your own campaign. And he's like, ah, oh, that's annoying. But like, it's like, well, obviously you could pay for your way to be. There. They were there like, I'll bet you could pay to your way to be a president. It was like, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, that'd be uh, wild if that's was going on. Uh, yeah, I mean, we never know. Who? I mean, honestly, none. Any, but nobody outside of that circle of billionaires has any fucking clue what is going on you know what i mean by the yeah, way not a, that's not a real mm -hmm. theory i have that was a joke it's a real yeah. theory no it's a real theory it's, a real, it's canon now <laughs> it'd be great if that turned into a conspiracy that's yeah. just crazy like it seems like a, ever since covid it seems like the life that that we're all living the world that we're in seems like almost everything is a joke but then it's like no that's actually real <laughs> that was right. actually happening it's like what well it's just like in like Crazy, the middle of covid you know? when the government released all these documents being like there are ufos yeah. and everyone was like nah whatever like we're in the middle of covid like no one even cared <laughs> i was like wait a minute they just admitted that all this shit they don't know what it is like well, we should be paying uh, attention to that so ufo means un unidentified flying objects right. so it doesn't mean that it's alien it doesn't mean it's that alien. you know there could be other countries or, or something that are doing it or it could be, you know, it seems like the government's so split up. There's, like, different branches that I think by the Constitution shouldn't even exist, but they True. do. And they have, like, all, you know, there's other, there's top secret stuff that even the presidents don't know about from what right. stuff Which is that wild. I've, like, read and heard. I don't know if any anything's real anymore. Right, you don't but, know what's yeah. true. So maybe there's a part of our own government doing this UFO stuff, and then other parts of our government see it and, and say, yes, UFOs exist, but it's our own government's they just UFOs. Don't know. You know, you know what knows? else, though? I don't, know. I, I don't know if I saw this, like, floated. Like, did I get this from somewhere, or is it my own brain? Not sure. Um, Wesley fact check. Oh. Uh. <laughs> but um, <laughs> there's no one to fact check us. Oh, we can make shit up. Just yeah. kind of, <laughs> we can, uh, anything goes. <laughs> Just say it. It's true. It's good. Right. But <laughs> oh, oh, uh, here's a crazy thought. What if UFOs, like, when they see stuff like, you know, Commander David Fravor or whatever. Yes, Fravor, <laughs> when, that's correct. When they see, like, crazy things doing weird maneuvers and whatever. What if that's just a natural phenomenon? Are you, if you're talking like, about swamp gas, Ryan, I swear no, to no, God. No, 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 I'm not swamp <laughs> gas. Just, what if that's, like, another aspect of the universe and how physics works? That we don't and know yet. That we just don't know about. And, like, like uh, you know. Like, we know about birds that fly around, and they apply to the laws of physics. Sure, it, we don't know about the Tic Tacs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, like the we don't or know. Oriole Borealis or whatever it's called. Yeah. yeah. Right? Like, that's pretty wild. And, yeah. And now Otherwise. we can, like, kind of explain it by... Like, what if these things that fly around the air, that. yeah, it's like, whether it's like, it's an illusion or it's lights or it's another kind of creature. I mean, that was, uh, did you see the movie uh, Nope? Like, in the movie Nope, uh, the, the nope. UFO is actually a creature at the end. It looks like a, what we think a UFO looks like, but then it like fucking transforms and it eats things. It. <laughs> it's like <laughs> yummy, and, and and it's like a you in there in that movie UFOs are just like another kind of undiscovered creature that lives in the air. That's possible. I don't know. I want to believe aliens. Oh, man, I, I'm definitely very spiritual, and there's definitely like I feel like there's like so much good that's going on. There's also like demonic stuff that's going on everywhere. And I think that it's up to each of us to to uh, stay positive and, and keep the best people around us, you know. And people that are negative and, and, and all that stuff, you just bring them up, you know. You, you do your best to help everybody that you can. And that's it. And that's all. Like, I don't know. It's pretty simple. <laughs> like, like just be cool? Hey, for the most part, yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, play you know, a few I'm, songs. I'm and... definitely Christian. I definitely like, you know, believe in, in all all of that. Sure. One hundred percent. But I think there is like there's other ways to explain it for people that aren't Christian that could understand it and it's a spiritual thing it's definitely like a good values and and there's like seeing like the ufos and all the stuff in the sky and all the all that like the crazy mm. stuff it's like you know there's something something's happening something's really different now than than was before covid something's happening yeah and you know do you have theories I, on what it is theories oh, all kinds of crazy theories. <laughs> we, can go, we can go real real crazy with this let's go uh, yeah let's go <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't really want to go that, uh, yeah, that okay. route. Yeah. we can that's, see this is what i talk like after gigs at bars this is yeah. what i can talk to people about <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, it, it's a yeah there's all kinds of stuff and then yeah. you know everything speaking of yeah. after covid we just had a, a weird thing happening in my my friend's group chat but like one guy was going real hard on so okay so there was a hurricane just down in like Baja or something oh, hurricane Hillary yeah and it was There's coming towards San Diego and so I was I'm not there so I haven't been watching the news but I guess the news was going real hard on hey this hurricane's coming here and you know it the storms naturally lose energy as they go further north in the Pacific right but they're like, there can be like, there's going to be like an unprecedented amount of rainfall. It could be this, this, that, and the other thing, you know? So anyway, there was one guy in our group chat who was just like, this is bull crap. This is uh, not going to be any kind of a big deal. The news is being ridiculous. I'm looking at the numbers and it's way out of proportion and just, I don't trust this. This is like, this is so icky that they're being that way. Or he said gross. And... And so I'm like, oh, that's interesting. He has, like, a real strong opinion about a hurricane. That's kind of weird. It's kind of a weird thing to have an opinion about. And then, about. like, a few other people in the group, some of the people in the group chat are like, you know, like, no, that's a lot of water. Because it's 1.8 inches. And in San Diego, you it only was, get 9 inches It was a, a hurricane year. 4 at one point. Yeah. And yeah. by the time I think it hit land, it turned down to a tropical, tropical, tropical storm. storm yeah. Which is still in a desert. That sounds insane. That sounds Yeah, it sounds like a lot to me. But I guess, uh, you know, people were kind of panicking and, and, you know, going to the grocery store and buying all the toilet paper and stuff like that. And so several people and several of my friends are like, this is overblown. This is ridiculous. The media is blowing out of proportion. And the, and the weird thing – and then I started going on social media and I saw, like, other people I know from San Diego, like, posting things. And one guy posted – a guy I really like. He posted a pic, something about the hurricane and he's like, have we lost the ability to think for ourselves? And – then I saw somebody else like making fun of the storm. And what I noticed is all the people who were like very uh, conspiratorial during COVID and very like anti, um, the, uh, ant, I don't know what they anti mean. Anti-establishment. Anti Just very like, mm. you know, the, the w in COVID people split into like masks versus not masks and like fuck this, this whole thing isn't real at all versus this is the most real thing that there's ever been. And, like, people got like real extreme. And, and I noticed that the people who were, like, very, like, fuck COVID, it's all, it's all, it's a hoax. Those same people are being, like, real hard on this hurricane. It's almost like a, the hurricane's a hoax. And my whole grandmaster theory about this mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is that in the post-COVID world, people are, like, now used to like i th i think people have lost so much trust in the media yeah that they're like if the media is saying it it's a lie and so now people i know that are like don't know anything about the weather are like going online and looking at weather statistics and being like having a hard opinion against a hurricane and just being like <laughs> this ain't going to be this ain't real the media's this is fake news the media's blowing it out of proportion they're yeah. trying to control us I mean, and it, and I'm like, I don't know. It's just kind of a lot of rain. What's funny is like they're treating it like it's a conspiracy to try to control them. But it's a hurricane. <laughs> but it's just yeah. a lot. It's just a lot of water. Well, I mean, there's part of me that feels like when I, I remember when I was younger, and there was like different. There was all these like there. It seemed, maybe I just wasn't watching the weather or something. But it, it seems like that everybody's oh, it's so hot now, and 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 there's like, a, oh, this winter storm is so bad, and I've driven through a lot of the stuff they're talking about, and tornado watches, and, and tons and tons of stuff, and I'm like, 
this is very normal weather. This is this is mm -hmm. what happens. It's been happening for my whole lifetime. <clears throat> and my you know, I hear I talk to so many people that are way older than me that that uh, agree like this weather's been just as bad. Yeah. Always. I mean, I mean but most th of the now they they make it sound like it's crazier mm -hmm. than what it is, but I, I mean, I don't, I don't know about that specific situation, but I don't, was it really crazy? I mean, I saw a bunch of. Like, it, I feel like was, social media, yeah. you can learn a lot more than watching the news. Like it's actual yeah. people's account that don't have an opinion. Yeah, they want to get video. their views, or whatever. Everybody wants to get views, but if you're just, if it's just a video of what's happening, I mean, yeah, I think it turned out to be crazy in some areas and not that crazy in others. Um, <clears throat> the the um, I saw a few videos of like. Some certain areas, it was like the worst in the desert. So, sure, like out by Coachella, there was like I saw people playing basketball and they were like up to their stomachs in water. Oh my gosh! So, like, some areas got incredibly flooded, but other areas, not so much. But it couldn't have been that bad if they're playing basketball, right? I mean, by the time flood, it gets up right? there, I mean, I mean, it was bad, but it's like there's you know, but there's also probably people just like the media, they're trying to make money. Mm -hmm. Right, they're, no, they're like, like, this they're will like, be funny. Hey, let's, let's go, go yeah. do this. See how many views we can get. Yeah, so I feel like to... when when you look at it, the I guess this is the worst storm that's hit San Diego since like the seventies. So, um, so that doesn't mean it's not like a weird like this has never happened like, before happens event. Occasionally, it's like well, fifty years ago or forty five years ago, it happened. You know, so it's just like a uh, every so often. And that's kind of my feeling about the whole situation. So I'm like. Every so often, there's a real bad storm, and that just happens, and it's weird that anybody would take sides on that, but, like, people <laughs> seem to be taking sides. I think it's, like, a post-COVID phenomenon of, like, because— Everyone's still so extreme. Yeah, just yeah, the, the extremeness is stuck up. around. I mean, yeah, there's so—and then, especially, like, like, we were talking about Joe Rogan and everything, you listen to all the wild stuff that he's talking about, and it's like— a lot of the stuff that's been conspiracy theories are have, are starting to be like proven true. Yeah. So it's like it's hard to, it's really hard to pick a side, you know. And and there's no such thing as a library and books anymore, really. I mean, you can go, <laughs> but everything's just online what you can read, and then it makes you think. What about the libraries? All the books that were written forever, like was right. that just a bunch <laughs> of bullshit too? Like some of it. I mean, yeah, it's tough. Like once you go down the rabbit hole of like people might be making stuff up or controlling things. It's like there's no end to, yeah. well, I do what, feel, can you, what can you stop on? I feel like people are starting to calm down, though. Yeah. Oh, because, yeah. like, like a week or a couple of weeks ago, I, I don't really use social media much. I never go on Facebook. and <clears throat> But I was, like, you know, open Facebook kind of on a whim, kind of scrolling through. And I realized later, like, I was kind of looking for a fight a little bit. Like, I was kind of waiting for someone to post some ridiculous shit so I could be like, you're a fucking idiot. You have no idea, where, you know. But I saw nothing. Like, every, everyone's pictures are just like, I got married, or we had a kid, or we bought a house, or whatever. Yeah, I feel like everyone's you're afraid stupid. to say it anymore. It's like yeah. our First Amendment has kind of gone away because of, how, like, all the canceling that was happening. And yeah. then, I mean, with uh, everything, there's a guy named Alan Dershowitz with uh who this is kind of going back into politics but this guy's like a he's uh he's a liberal he classifies himself as a liberal but he's like a a lawyer that's represented like I think the Clintons and like Mike Tyson not not Mike Tyson uh that uh very different kinds of people <laughs> everybody he 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 um uh Trump it, it may have been Mike Tyson also but uh OJ Simpson and just a bunch of all these different people and he's he's basically he, like a neutral, very neutral guy, and he's saying that what's happening right now with the with the whole Trump thing, which is that is it's unprecedented everything that's happening. He's saying they're they're like taking away his First Amendment right, and he, he's, they're trying to just basically get rid of our First Amendment by all that. And he wants to represent him, but he has a rule where he doesn't represent the same person twice ever. Weird. So he, so he's saying, but if it gets to the point where the people of the United States are are are, uh, I don't know if it's called suing them or going, you know, going against it, hmm. he will represent the people of the United States hmm. for it because he's saying it's that bad. Yeah. It, so that's kind of, I think that's what what's kind of happened with COVID and everything when they start shutting down all these different people that. Especially like the doctors that are that are they've been doing this their whole life and they're 
saying different things than what the media is telling us and, and what all these other people are telling us and they just close their account saying it's false information, they 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 have their First Amendment right. They're allowed to say that, especially as a professional of it, and they just shut down all of this one side of it. That's when there's, there's yeah, what do you, it's, yeah. well, it's, it's never, it's, it, it, it's not supposed to happen in the United States, at least. The rest of the world can do whatever they want, but, right. you know, I mean, it, uh, that, so it just that's what I think that's where we're at where you're right. talking about how it used to be just like yeah, you're yeah, everybody's just right. going crazy which wasn't great <laughs> it, was to- it was toxic it, yeah. but I mean it's also freedom so uh, you know it's your first amendment right to be able to do that but there's also uh, rules where like if you say um, like fuck you to a cop they can give you a uh, citation for that you're not they actually can? allowed to, it's called really? it's called uh misconduct or something what's it called oh disorderly uh, conduct disorderly conduct mm. but say and there's actually huh. in, at least in Ohio I just I just learned that the other day it's did actually you say it's called class wrong no no no, no <laughs> I did not I, I absolutely did not but it, it uh it, it's Learned like that a, the hard way. It's a, like a rule, like a like it's been done in court already and has won. So you're not allowed to say that. So it's huh. not violating uh, unless somebody pushes it up to, I guess, the Supreme Court or a higher court or something. Yeah. But right now, you're not actually allowed to say that without getting a. That's probably just a citation or something. Sure. Yeah. Misdemeanor. Yeah. Have you ever seen those videos on like Instagram or TikTok or wherever where they have like those guys who make it their lives? To oh, like, First Amendment auditors? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm so deep down the rabbit hole of that. Oh, I could. Oh, I've watched thousands of hours. That's great. Uh, have, have you yeah, heard of this? Well, have you not seen so this? I, I haven't, but it, it okay. sounds like they're they're reading it and trying to actually. Yeah. So what these guys do is they go out with a camera, and they go film, you know, around. But they try to put themselves in these situations where they're not doing anything illegal, but they know it's annoying the fuck out of they're people. Being dicks. Yeah. They're, they're, until they're, the, they come and call the cops. And they just are like, are these cops going to respect my rights or not? (laughs) And that's what it's all about. And they have these conversations with these cops. And sometimes the cops get real aggressive. Sometimes these these cops get fired from these videos. Or like like the police departments get sued. Um, Most of the time, nothing happens. They, you know, they go about and they go about their day, whatever. And it's fine. But I love these videos. I watch these so often. These are guys who like know all the laws. And they know, they often know more than the cops. Yeah. And a manga set press, best YouTube channel for that. <laughs> Not gonna try to spell it. Yeah, G A N E S C T. It's <laughs> like they go and do these things that cops would normally try to stop people from doing, and be like, "Hey, sir, you know, you're bothering. You know, move along." Well, or or they'll like. There's this one guy. He like goes into police stations. Yeah. And he'll just be filming them, and they're like, "We're gonna ask you to stop." And he's like, "This is a public space. I'm allowed to film it as a citizen. I'm a First Amendment auditor. Yeah. Oh, I'm allowed to be here." Up. And they get so pissed, and they're like, <laughs> oh, "You need sure. to go. You need like, to stop. You need to turn that off." And he's like, "It is within my rights. Section three, four, five, six says we're allowed <laughs> to do this. Blah blah blah." Yeah, that's <laughs> not. I don't. That's that guy doesn't pass the cool factor. No, either. no, there's, they're there's, huge assholes. <laughs> yeah, like, nobody wants. So, but like, it's good entertainment, let me tell you. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, but then you get people wanting to copy that, and then you, right. all of a sudden you have a whole a society problem. that's being assholes. And nobody wants to be cops anymore, and now you're having places like San Francisco, and nobody wants to even be there. No, yeah, you yeah. Know, it's like, it, and, it and the turns thing into is, a problem at some point. As much as people are like, the cops do all these things that are wrong. They're also there's, and of course there's problems because it's a lot of people. I'm like, but we need cops. Like that's an important part of society. <laughs> like we do need police. Like that's pretty important. We can't get rid of all the police. Yeah. And a lot of people think we can for some reason. I, don't, I do not understand. But you also see the Second mm. Amendment auditors, and they're even more wild. We could go oh. back to the Wild <laughs> oh, West where just everybody carries a gun and, and talk. You know, what's that saying? Like, talk. It's a. Uh, mm, uh, tread lightly, but carry a heavy stick. Uh, yeah, <laughs> no, not, I mean, yeah, yeah I guess it's basically. <laughs> Like, uh, now another cave that we're looking at for our <laughs> wedding. <laughs> we went to a cave in Kentucky called Lost River Cave, and supposedly, uh, oh, what's his what's his name? The old outlaw Jesse James. Jesse James. Yeah, Jesse James supposedly hid out in this cave. That's cool. He did like a train heist or something, and then hid out in wow. this cave. Yeah, Man. yeah. We're just we're looking into like specifically caves that have like a Wild West history. <laughs> yeah. No, I didn't finish earlier. The Ruskin, Johnny Cash owned it. They used to do shows there. 
the other cave. Yeah. This is the cave. There's then there's a waterfall, and you get married in front of the waterfall. Little water, a little trickly waterfall. Mm-hmm. You know, it's pretty, but it's not like a roaring rapid or anything. But it's right next to the cave. It's really cool. Well, then there's a building there that uh, I guess was like a socialist college that was started. Like they started like a socialist community on this property at some point in time, years before the Johnny Cash thing. They built this uh, this school in in the 1890s, and it was like a wi- all women's college. Eventually, open to men. And then the owner, by the way, was there, and he was like telling us random stories. That's why I have like random factoids. But he was saying there was like a socialist community they started, and they like created their own money, and they were like a little commune mm-hmm. in the early 1900s. And then there's a stone building that David Allen Co built. Do you know? Have you heard of him? Hey, he's from Ohio. Oh, is he? Yeah. Um, my uh, one of my best friends is named Co, and he was named Co after Wetzel? David Allen Co. Oh, okay. <laughs> Co. Yeah. yeah. Co Wetzel. Yeah, you haven't heard of him yet. No, is his first name Co? K O E, I believe. Oh, interesting. Yeah, my he's, Co's he's a doing C-O-E. like uh, he's doing like rock and roll uh, country music, but it's like he's got a cool sound that's very organic. It's probably when I'm listening to it, it's probably. Four piece, maybe maybe a five piece, but okay, it's a, a real raw organic stuff. He I've writes heard. he writes a song about going to Taco Bell, being drunk with all his friends, and who's <laughs> sober enough to drive us to Taco Bell. I've heard <laughs> I've heard the name before, um, but yeah, David Allen Co built this building on the property, and I guess he uh, went there to escape the IRS, <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, shoot, shoot. so it's a really wild place. We're looking like it's a they That's do a, cool a wedding venue there now, but like it has all these historic things on it with like famous figures and the commune's like enough of a sales point, I think. <laughs> the <laughs> commune, straight up cult. You know why not? Uh, yeah. Should I open up another beer here? Feel free. I feel like I gotta. Go. I mean, we only got one left like in the gotta, twelve, so we gotta finish it. Oh right? shoot! Yeah, we gotta finish it. I feel like I gotta go pee again. Yeah, well, we have bathrooms <laughs> for a reason. All right, so oh. how did you two meet? I want to hear that. Oh, no one ever asks us questions. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Taking go, another go, bathroom break. He's just like... Fucking sneaky bathroom guy. Right. Um, how we meet for real. Uh... <laughs> The year was, uh, I don't know the year, but I, it was my 22nd birthday. No, no, no. We met no. long before okay. that. We met long We met at the Future Quest. Yeah. Yeah, there was this church uh, we went to at the time, uh, Foothills. We probably talked about it on the podcast many a time. And uh, Foothills had this big youth event called Future Quest. Future Quest. And it uh, started in 1998. I was there for the first one oh, and wow. for the following, like, 15. I still have my Future Quest 1998 t-shirt. Wow. Yeah. Goddamn right, wow. <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, so- the, I was but, in charge of building an airsoft course right, they had with airsoft my friend at John. The event. And uh, we were building this airsoft course for all the kids. And um, your cousin was one of our close friends. Yep. And so he was coming to help out. And so you came with him to help out as well. And you were- yeah, building so a structure first with airsoft. Yep, and then, uh, but we didn't. We weren't really friends then. We were acquaintances. Mm-hmm. We weren't friends until your twenty second birthday. But we were also acquaintances because I kept hanging out with your cousin, and At you my lived house. with him. Yeah, and you'd like be in the room playing musical instruments. Yeah, I was learning guitar at the time. And so every so often I'd break away from the group and like go hang out with you and talk about musical instruments. Yeah, we'd play guitar. I remember the wow, we've been doing it all these years. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, (laughs) we haven't changed. We're still doing the same shit. Uh, (laughs) But yeah, I remember like you first came and you were like, "You're on guitar," and I was like, "Yeah." And you're like, "What do you know how to play?" I was like, "I know how to play like two songs, man. Like, Hey Jude and Come Together. Like that was it." Um, But then we started hanging out. We started great songs to to play. Though first two songs I ever learned on guitar. Yeah. Um, I learned the bass line on guitar for Come Together. Like, you know, a little silly, bum, but, bum, like, I loved it. Right. Yeah. But where we really became friends was uh, you... I was with Tim, mm-hmm. uh, a buddy of ours, Tim, uh, at uh, this teen center we used to volunteer at. We both volunteered at the same teen center, but different locations. Yeah. Um, And he was like, hey, man. It was like this kid at this teen center who like hung out. Like he was, he was kind of like I was his mentor, you know. And he's like, I heard of this cool thing you can do, where you can go and uh, explore this abandoned Air Force base. 
And he was like, we should go check it out. And I was like, where is it? And he's like, I don't know, man, but I know a guy who knows. And he calls Ryan. <laughs> You've done a lot of this. This, this yeah. is just a mind thing. You're, just, yeah. you're like going, well, you're start, trying to find aliens yeah, and stuff. It started with Air Force Base. Yeah. Did, so, you go, did you go to the desert when they did that big uh, Area 51 thing? No, no. But I, I would have loved to, to yeah. but no. <laughs> no. But yeah, so we started exploring this abandoned Air Force base and went there a bunch. A ton there. of times. A bunch. And uh, finally. Now it's gone. They've torn it down yeah. now. But Where's one it? night we were looking for something else to do. Hmm. We had we were like going to the Air Force base again and we we're kinda like, ah, we've gone so much. Like and and somehow we got the idea, like, wait, what about mines? And we started Googling. And so we Googled and we found an abandoned mine shaft and the rest is history. Yeah, yeah first one was the Warlock mine. If you remember, it was me, you, and Travis going to check yeah. it out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I know. But then also, uh, we did forget to mention my 22nd birthday. After the Air Force Base, the reason we we transitioned into hanging out was on my 22nd birthday, I was thinking about who to invite, and we had just hung out at this Air Force Base. And I was like, I'll invite that guy, you know. And so I invited him to my birthday. We went to the field in San Diego. It's a Irish pub. And uh, and then I married his sister. Yeah, <laughs> one thing led, <laughs> one thing led to another. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> yeah, now we're now we're locked in. And so now we do a podcast. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> you can also reference. Uh, cheers to that. Yeah, mm-hmm. cheers. To very. This. I think like. Cheers. I think like episode four or five of the whole show is called the, or maybe it's seven. It's called the story of us. And we do we this, about that. what we just said, in like a two-hour format. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, nice. All right. I'm, I'm going to go listen to that one on, on the way back it's, to South Florida real old. It's rough. Our early episodes suck. Like, <laughs> it was, it's real rough. We admit they suck a little bit. Oh, yeah. Uh, they were fun, though. Because back, back in then, we didn't have any, like, now we cut it off at around two hours. Um, you know, we drink a reasonable amount. Back then, we used There's to not have any time no limit, Let's and we just drank till we were done. <laughs> so we drank a full bottle of liquor every episode, and uh, we were known as the whole bottle. Podcast. Yeah, that's what, that's what. Yeah, we had like a like a, some of the because we also, used to also stream it live online on Twitch. And so people would be in the chat, and that's what they taglined us as the whole bottle podcast. And this was like 2018, right? Yeah, yeah, 2018, 2019. Which, by the way, if you go back, there's an episode with uh, what's his name, Stony Stony Banks. Mm. Yeah. Michael, Mike Ferreira. Mike Ferreira. That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So episode, he's called Stony Banks. So that's what he goes by. But we mentioned you like ten times. Yeah, I remember listening to that, and I, I was just cracking up. And you just <laughs> you just let it keep going. You're like building <laughs> building it up, and it, what and was, it was it like we were saying, probably like, drunk. So how did you meet Judd? Yeah. Cause yeah, you, and it was because like, what happened was he's like, hold on, I'll tell you about that later. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah bring it up, bring it up. <laughs> we would do the show every. We would do it on Friday nights back then, and we like almost were never ahead of the game on scheduling, and no. so it was like so often if a guest canceled or we just like forgot to schedule somebody or like we would every week we'd be like, fuck, it's Friday, we got to find someone tonight. Like we need a guest now. And it's Nashville, so you can kind of do that. And so anyway, I remember, I think at one night I was like, Jet, we need a guest. Do you want to come be on our podcast? And you were busy, but you're like, oh, I I'm know like, this guy. I'm, I'm sure I wanted to. I'm like, that sounds awesome. Right, yeah. But I, Friday night's a big night to make money when you're, yeah, you know, That's why we don't oh, do a yeah. Friday night. When you're in the, uh, <laughs> what, what did we say earlier? The front, the... Uh, uh, freelance front freelance man. Freelance front man. When you're a freelance front man, <laughs> I'm like, are you going to pay me to come be on the podcast? Do I have to cancel this gig to be there? Yeah. Like, I would love to be there. It's crazy. It's taken this long to actually make it happen. But Yeah. yeah but we did. Hard. And we had a huge, like, two, two and a half year break in the middle, too, which didn't help. Yeah. But. That's true. No, but Chris, Stony Banks, man, he's I, I love his style because I'm also a guy that, uh, for a long time, I was, like, one of the reggae guys here in town, which you don't really... <laughs> Yeah, it's not really reggae. You know, I was listening to your music on the way over, and a song came on that was more reggae. Yeah, and, and I was it, like, felt so like like a lot like Sublime to me. Yeah, like I love Sublime, and and um and, and you know, I was doing. I'm I've been all, always been all over the place. But it was really hard to call myself a country artist because, you know, like, I I don't feel like I grew up country enough to a lot of stuff. But now I hear the radio and I see the people that are doing. It, I'm like, oh, I'm kind, like, anybody's I'm, country. I'm enough. more country <laughs> than this, like for sure. But, <laughs> but uh. But yeah, so we met down in Key West, uh, me and Stony Banks. And I think he didn't call himself that yet, but it was just an instant like, 
dude, you're you're cool. And then and we just hung out, and, and uh, he's kind of doing the country reggae thing, which uh, there's definitely a style to what I do that's like that. It's kind of like Zach Brown, how mm. he does it. Mm. Um, I mean, Kenny Chesney does it a little bit. Those are really – Nico Moon's kind of diving into it, a newer guy. Uh, uh, Jake Owen kind of does it a little bit. Mm. But, like, what he's doing, he's not really – reggae country he's more like country reggae because reggae is more his foundation i mm. feel like as a production at least and then he just throws a little country words behind it or whatever mm. but it seems like now today you can call you can call about anything country so you know yeah god, god bless him <laughs> yeah. let, let him you know bring the, the country values up and make it happen yeah now <clears throat> we gotta get uh we're getting out of here pretty soon all right but uh before we do oh man uh, we do have one very important question that we ask every guest. Oh, the jaws? Is it something about sharks? I just went. <laughs> I just went whale watching up in Newfoundland. It was almost like shark diving down in West Palm. <laughs> <laughs> that was just that was just great with the with the thing going on behind in the background. I love it. Um, but here's the thing. Here we go. <laughs> If you had to choose. And you do. And you do. Now, the important thing about this question is the answer must not come from here. And for the audio only listeners, you're missing out on us switching our own cameras during this question. He was pointing at his pecker. <laughs> <laughs> he was. The yeah. answer must come from here. What's he pointing to, Judd? He's pointing at his <laughs> kneecaps now. <laughs> yeah, you already used dicks. What else do you have? <laughs> you, you shot your load on that right in the beginning. <laughs> um, so, um, if you had, have he you had to choose? His heart. Uh, his heart. That's yeah, right. My heart. God damn it, Ryan. <laughs> if you had to choose, and you do, and you do. My eyes are kind of tearing up a little bit. As right they here. should. Now the important <laughs> now what that actually means in practice coming from your heart and not your head is that we need an answer immediately. Instantly. I don't want you to think <sighs> about it. I want the answer that is coming from the depths of your soul. Okay. Okay. Oh man. Here we go. <laughs> oh, new sound oh, effect man. for this one. Ooh, both at the same time is fucking tense. Man. I can't even think We that want the on. instant answer in your heart, shot. <laughs> If you had to choose. And you do. And you do. And you do. What would you say? Is. Is your favorite kind of turtle. Donatello. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's a good one. That's a good one. Good. Uh, a yeah, Teenage better. Mutant Ninja Turtle, yeah. baby. Did it's you? only the second time we've gotten a, a Ninja Turtle. Did you know that Jury and I... Our favorite Ninja Turtle is Donatello. Don Don Both of us. Yeah. Is it really? It's yeah. the best one. He's got the bow staff. Dude, he kicks ass. He's dope. With, with a, yeah, with it's a probably stick. why we became friends. Well, come on. Probably. And he's kind of nerdy. Right? He's smart. He's like, yeah. Smart. Yeah, he's, he's like, clever. Keeps the, everybody else in line a little bit. Saves the day a lot. Right. Because who? You got, you got Raphael, and let's be real. No one cares about Raphael. Right. He's the. Red he's one just real size. aggressive. And he's just like a badass. Like he's like right. a kind of like a like a, a meathead. Right. A yeah. Yeah. You got Michelangelo. He's just a stoner. He's just a groovy dude. Yeah. Just a smoking weed turtle. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you know mm -hmm. that he's supposed to be a stoner. And then uh, I don't even remember the other guy's name. Was it Leonardo. Leonardo? Leonardo. Yeah. Yeah. He's just a, he's kind of a dick. I he's don't more know. of a ninja that's just yeah. like tries too hard. He's like the kinda. leader. You know, tries a little much. But Donatello, that dude's dope. Yeah. We're into it. We're into it. Who had a crush on April? All of them, probably. Yeah, I meant of us. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry, I was I, cartoon. I, was, I wasn't. I didn't get boners yet. At yeah. that point of the yeah, cartoon chicks aren't the, my jam. Uh, Sorry, cartoon stuff. <laughs> it's gonna make like an anime joke, and uh, but then I didn't. Okay, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> now, before we before we do get out of here, though, uh, we gotta let all the people know where they can find you. Um, so what I, I used to say on Broadway all the time, I'm sure there's plenty of bands that still do. You can find me on Plenty of Fish, Christian Mingle, Tinder, J-Date, <laughs> Hot or Not, Black People Meet, Hebrew Nation, 
eBay, <laughs> Facebook. eBay. <laughs> uh, I mean, everybody's got their price. Everyone's got a price. <laughs> I got a Only website fans. called juthuffman.com, J-U-T-T-H-U-F-F-M-A.com. I just uh, I just don't really update it much, but you can. there's a link there, too. It's called a Linktree account. Um, yep. You can find that on, on Instagram. That got, uh, the social media thing is kind of where I post the, the schedules, Facebook and Instagram, doing the meta platform. I post it on Twitter a little bit, too. Um, I've tried to start all these other ones, but it's, there's just too many to keep up. So maybe someday I'll, I'll figure all that <laughs> out. But the main thing is like Apple Music or uh, YouTube, Amazon. It is getting it's getting late. It's our <laughs> yeah. We've been here really like drinking for how long? Sheesh. A while, a while. Y'all are some party animals. <laughs> Ready but, to go do some karaoke? <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh, Jut Huffman, not Hoffman. H U F F. To be clear, I got on all the puff. things. Huff and puff. People used to call me Huffy. Huff and puff. Huffy. Huffy. Do you smoke all the time? Well, I had a bike, a huffy bike that oh, I yeah. did a backflip on and landed straight on my back oh. when I was a kid off of a mulch pile. That's brutal. It was, it was Dude, all right. Getting wind knocked out. I haven't had the wind knocked out of me oh. in like 10 years, 50, 20 years maybe, you know? Oh, I we, feel like as a kid that, that we, happened we all we the could, time. We could sit here and talk all night about this. I know. You know, we can. <laughs> you know we can. But anyways, guys, as always, thanks for coming to hang out. You guys are awesome, and we'll see y'all next time. I work my fingers to the bone, need to sit back and relax, but I'm racking up the overtime and stacking up the cash. It's hard to find the time to let it all unwind, but now I'm trading in my dollar signs. Today we drink, let it all go, throw out your worries, let that good time roll. Just ain't enough Gonna chase it with tequila Then finish it with rum If you find a pretty girl Don't let her drink alone Move on in and make a toast Say hey Today we drink Let it all go Throw out your worries Let that good time roll This round's on me Now raise your glass Don't know what's ahead Change the past Today we drink Yeah Oh, I've been working for the weekend It's finally here I made a small donation To this high school Times roll, this round's on me. Now raise your glass. Don't know what to hell, and we can't change the past. Today we drink, let it all go. Throw out your worries, let that good time roll.